I guess we all survived the eclipse, guys. We've got the Orange Bowl MVP, a guy who threw an orange and completely obliterated it, and he's going to be throwing for 80-yard bombs and crazy goal line touchdowns in the NFL somewhere new near you. It is now former. We always say like that they're the Tennessee quarterback, but he's not anymore. He is now the future NFL quarterback. Joe Milton joining the show, coming to an NFL roster to terrify defenders trying to tackle him. I've got an NFL comp, and it's Brian's with Schmuck. Schmellen, okay, coming up. Cannot wait to talk to him. If you have questions for him about the orange, a lot of people want to know about the orange. I don't know if I'm going to get to that, but let me know what you guys think uh, over at Up and Adam Show. We also have, uh, I also don't know if I can call him a Hall of Famer. He's not in the Hall of Fame just yet, but he's named the Hall of Fame. He's Hall of Fame bound. Dwight Freeney joining the show. I bet he loves taking on rookie quarterbacks back in the day. Can't wait to have him. What a delight uh, on a Tuesday. And so we can all get our education this morning. Let's go to school with Robert Mays of The Athletic. Rico comparisons coming in uh, on my Twitter feed for Joe Milton. I wonder what you guys think. I wonder where he should go. Listen, a lot of people are saying Joe Milton. I would say outside of Caleb Williams, as far as tools, as far as high ceiling, as far as potential, Joe Milton is 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 that guy right behind Caleb. Where will he go? Probably at a great value to some team. Where would I like him to go? <gasps> Somewhere where he can just sit and hang and develop a little bit. A lot of people saying Jets, Aaron Rodgers, I feel like that was all over my feed. Let him sit behind Aaron Rodgers. Like, I, I don't I don't mind that. I like his journey, I like that. But I'm gonna say, before this is of course before we talk to him, we've got Dwight Freeney on the show. We're gonna hang out with Robert Mays here in a second. Like, I, I dug into like the, the Jets of it all. I, I can see it, that's fine. But I don't know, why not put him on the other team in New York? I would like to see Joe Milton go to the Giants. I'd like to see them grab him, put him behind DJ, reunite DJ, who has some similar sort of style, if you really break it, similar potential, right? Um, you put him in there, reunite him with this guy, Jalen Hyatt. I don't hate that uh, at all. That sounds great. Get him, get him with Dable. Well, I don't know who had Dable. Josh Allen had Dable, got the best out of him. They're basically mirrors of each other, in my opinion, as far as talent. Very similar sets of similar sets of tools between those two. That would be my pick if I was, uh, you know, a wizard and got to decide where things go. I would say Tennessee quarterback Joe Milton to the New York Giants. New York Giants will pro fans will probably hate that uh, for no reason at all. But let's see what uh, Robert Mays thinks. The Athletic Football Show host coming to us from Chicago. So much to get to, but I'm like so juiced. I was watching these like goal line runs this kid Joe Milton just trucking <laughs> running through people all night last night while everybody was watching basketball but me uh Joe Milton to the Giants Jets what do you make of him I think just any sort of developmental plan that a team might have where he gets to sit, like you mentioned, that would probably be ideal because the tools are undeniable. I think it's more about kind of the refinement and the nuances of the position. So if you can get him into a place with a decent quarterback developer where he'll have a long runway, I think that that's probably the move. Is Josh Allen fair? We're talking raw. We're talking like maybe some need some finessing. I mean, so did Josh Allen coming in. Accuracy, the arm, the mobility, the fearlessness. One-year starter, obviously, with, with Milton, so he does need that development but is that is that I hate the player comp, but I like I'm a joke because I always make them. I assume it's probably a little bit further to go than Josh mm. Allen had, considering he was a top ten pick, mm -hmm. and Joe Milton is probably more of a developmental home run swing. But if you're trying to talk yourself into tools, I think that's a pretty good place to start. All right, you're in Chicago. Is there like a new facial hair thing going on? What's happening with this? Is I do new? have a mustache. What yes. Is, what I, is I, this? I, What's happening? I it just it, was, it happened a couple weeks ago. I hadn't had a beard in a while, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try this. And as soon as I got the stamp of approval from my wife, that's all I needed. So I'm gonna keep it for a while. She's she into likes it. it. That's all that matters. Okay, yeah. I I love that. I I thought, was there a DJ on top of Wiener Circle in Chicago, like Marshmallow? Was that? Did I make that up? Did you hear this? That sounds right. I'm sure that probably happened. No, it literally happened yesterday. They set up a DJ thing on top of Wiener <laughs> Circle. I think it was Marshmallow. Maybe somebody can fact check that. Uh, I, th I figured you were there. I figured maybe that's where the mustache came from. I had to ask. I was not there, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm sad to have missed it, though. It was two days ago. Sorry, Marshmallow. Old news. Old <laughs> news. Let's get to stuff that's going on because it's all very exciting. We're 16 days away from the NFL draft, finally. Uh, Caleb Williams, let's just do it. He's going to go first overall. Let's Sure. It, or, or he should, if that happens. Like, what are realistic expectations for the Bears? Carmen Vitalia Fox Sports covers the NFC North in and out, and she got me excited about what this team can be with him under center. 
I absolutely think if things break right, they could be a playoff team in the NFC. Woo! Right now, I think they have the eighth best Super Bowl odds of any team in the NFC. But if you look at kind of that second tier of teams, Dallas is in a little bit of a transition. The Rams and Packers were great last year. Can they keep that up? I think they'd have to get a little bit lucky. I don't think they're one of the seven best teams right now, but if he can come in and play solid football, they have a really good situation for a rookie quarterback. And this is a top 10 defense down the back half of the season after they draft, after they traded for Montez sweat. So I think there is a solid enough roster where he doesn't even have to be CJ Stroud. You know, if he's 60, 70% of a Justin Herbert or CJ Stroud, the guys who have been incredible as rookies, I think they can be a competitive team right away. What do you think they do out there at nine? It's a great question. If one of the receivers is there, I still think they should take one. Keenan Allen's 31. He's not under contract past this season. I also think that you still need three receivers in the modern NFL. And if you drop Roma Dunze next to Keenan Allen, who mm. does a lot of his work in the slot, I don't think you have to talk yourself into that. So if one of those three guys is still there. That's probably the decision I'd make. Uh some people are saying Brock Bowers, you're saying a wide receiver. I would love that. And then you're working yourself into some excitement. I mean, the Bears could be a playoff team in that world because you're a, a, a really talented quarterback walking into a better situation than most quarterbacks walk into. It's a lot of faith in Shane Waldron. I, for some reason, I have the faith in Shane Waldron. He's done a really solid job. If you look at what happened over the last two seasons in Seattle, they were a borderline top mm -hmm. 10 offense in 2022. And last year they took a step back, but they were dealing with so many offensive line injuries last season. Charles Cross missed time, Abe Lucas missed time. And I actually think that that staff did a really good job of keeping it together and piecing it together while dealing with all of that. So I have faith that that the floor of that offense can be very high with him as an offensive coordinator. And they have the supporting cast talent wise. I keep thinking about the funny character in this is Chicago, just Chicago, whether it's the team, the organization, the ownership and the fandom, the fan group, the media group, which I believe is one of the more unique ones. Uh, the, the, the temperament of Chicago media is, is incredible. Um, are, is Chicago ready? How do you how do you if you were to guess how they're going to embrace the Caleb Williams experience? Are they, is, is the patience there? Is the through losses to Jordan Love and company and Sam, a loss to Sam Darnold? Like, are, is it going to be supportive? Like what is Chicago's uh, temperament right now with this? I think if we take anything from the Justin Fields experience, if there are any moments to grab onto, the city of Chicago and the Bears fan base will grab onto them. <laughs> this is a place that is desperate for any excitement at quarterback and has been for a really long time. You think about how fervent the support for Justin Fields was from a huge chunk of the fans here. Yeah. If Caleb Williams has success, if there are moments on Sunday that you can get excited about, I think that it's going to be full steam ahead. I have no concerns about that. What do you say to fans who don't want Caleb Williams, who just think like, it's like they don't want the healthy, good relationship. They're so used to the bad ones. What do you say to those fans? Just sit, step back for two seconds <laughs> and be honest with yourself about what you've had to endure. Over, I'm 36 years old. <laughs> I, I can count on one hand the amount of times I've turned the Bears on on Sunday and the quarterback is the reason I was excited it's to watch. It's so true. For it's so much of my life for, and so much of my fandom, the most exciting thing that could happen is the Bears got to stop on defense and they were returning a punt. Yeah. That was it. That was the thing to look forward to Get, having a chance to want the offense out there. That is an experience that I'm ready to embrace. Yeah. Especially when you have like the, the loves of the world coming in and like, who knows the Vikings might have an exciting backup to Darnold that they're developing. Like they have to nail it. And Caleb's got, you know, I, Brian Poles is doing his thing. I'm very excited about cautiously. Cause I'm like, am I going to feel dumb about this in like three months or a year from now? Uh, I'm, I'm cautiously very, very excited. Uh, let's move on to some other NFL stuff. We're so happy that you're joining me to like sort of go over and get my head straight on all these things. Robert Mays, you guys can check out his <laughs> podcast, all of his work all the time. Um, and I just wanted to get into a little bit of the Gerard Mayo of this all because fascinating, this wild card Patriots team. Here's what he said to ESPN this week about the Patriots rebuilding process. He said uh, the Texans have been building the team for two years before they got st Stroud in that position. I'm not asking for patience, but I kind of am. It's a process. It's not only about the quarterback. Obviously, you want to have that QB1 and build around him, but it doesn't always happen the way you want it. Um, a little hedging going on, a little foreshadowing, a little like, please embrace me. What do you think about this and how they should handle the third overall pick? I love hearing it because I have been team trade down, I think, since the beginning mm. of this process. If you look at the roster, there are just so many holes. Yes. They still have a hole at left tackle. They have no pass catchers. I and mean, this is a team, especially on offense, it's really starting over. 
It's essentially starting from square one. And if you're in that position, it's hel- it helps so much to be able to stockpile draft capital. And that's exactly what they could do if they were to trade down. I mean, just consider a timeline with the Vikings. If they were to get 11, 23, and a first round pick next year, just to start, that is a great place to begin any sort of rebuild. And if the Patriots are being honest with themselves, that's where they are right now. Yeah, it's just, it's all, to me, it's all about Elliot Wolf. Because you're, I mean, Jarrah's out there saying, we could have this this Texans like turnaround. Well, you don't have Nick Casario, who I think had a pretty big chunk to say about what happened with the Patriots, at least behind the scenes or in some like, you know, cell b- beneath everything next to Ernie Adams, like clinking a mug uh, uh, on the bars that <laughs> they were let out once a day to get some sunshine. Um, but but it'll it you know is Elliot Ron is like who what what is are we nepo babying? What are we doing here? Like it's so freaking fascinating uh, what they do. But like you're saying, glaring holes. And very under the radar. Like I was asking, I forget who it was, Deshaun Jackson. I was saying because he's so down on the Bills, and I go, "How bad are the Bills going to be? Like Patriots better record?" He goes, "Yeah, I think it'll be like that." So it's super fascinating because you know the, the odds of them winning like five games is is uh, if you look at the like Fanduel Sportsbook, it's it's insane. With, with the, but the I like the undersell over deliver of it all when it comes to that. Now on this week on your show, the Athletic Football Show, um, y'all did uh, a deep dive on all of the pass catchers in this year's draft class. Is it Marvin Harrison Jr. and everybody else? Uh, And if so, what is it that makes him stand alone? I think there's still a gap between him and the other two guys that are projected to be drafted in the top 10. I think that says more about Marvin Harrison Jr. than the other two guys. Dane Brugler, who does a phenomenal job for us at The Athletic, he said that Malik Neighbors would have been his number one player in Mm. each of the last two drafts. Not just receiver, number one player in each of the last two drafts. So that says that Marvin Harrison Jr. is just a special prospect. And when you watch him, so many of these college offenses, LSU is a good example. These guys are playing in so much space. They're playing in the slot all the time. They're not being asked to do exactly what an NFL team is going to ask them to do. And then you turn on Marvin Harrison Jr. tape. He's just an NFL receiver right now. The releases, how nuanced his game is, how refined it is. He almost makes it look so easy that I think people are missing everything that he has to his game. And that may be some of the reasons that people are talking themselves into Malik neighbors and that gap has shrunk mm-hmm. for some folks. But I think that this is just a special group of receiving talent and he's the headline guy in that group. Love that. And I'm sure uh, JJ McCarthy's old coach is going to grab somebody there for his chargers. And you look at JJ McCarthy, it's sort of fascinating. Uh, he's interesting. He's intriguing. And he's shot up mock drafts in the past few months. He's been rumored to go second overall why the skyrocket rise here? What is going on? There's some people who follow the drafts really close, closely. I mentioned Dane before. He thought that he'd be kind of a top 15 pick, even going back into the fall, just because when the process began, it was going to be easy for coaches specifically to talk themselves into this guy. If you're a team like the Vikings and those top three quarterbacks are going to be off the board by the time you can make a trade up, I think it's easy to look at J.J. McCarthy and the skill set that he has, the success that he had, and say, even if he doesn't have the ceiling of a Caleb Williams or a Drake may I can win with this guy on a rookie contract. And I think so many teams are in that position where they just need an answer. Mm -hmm. It's easy to get there with JJ McCarthy. Okay. My producer looked at your timeline on Twitter and so did I, and we realized that you are very passionate about food. Okay. Food, you not knowing the wiener circle thing, kind of a strike against you, to be honest, because that's an iconic food spot uh, in Chicago that no Chicagoan actually goes to, but I'm going to to, uh, ask you to take your two main interests and combine them, giving us some delicious food comparisons for some of the top draft prospects. Let's start with Caleb Williams. Your homework assignment was your, what is your food comparison for Caleb? I think Caleb Williams is kind of an avant-garde, like molecular gastronomy sort of restaurant. Talk about Chicago. Like Caleb Williams is like a linear, right? Where you have, but the thing with those restaurants, the ones that are really great, like the truly special ones, they also are very good at the nuts and bolts cooking. That, that's the baseline of it all. And I think that becomes the question with Caleb Williams. We know he can do the fancy stuff that no one else can pull off, but can he still do the nuts and bolts cooking? Can the temperatures be right? Because there's so much on his tape where you just don't see that down-to-down consistency because it's not what he was asked to do. So at the high end of it, he's a three Michelin star restaurant. But that kind of cooking can go wrong when it's not rooted in fundamentals. Honestly, in no disrespect, I mean, that ownership group is amazing. What they've done is, is amazing. I will leave there and be like, where's the McDonald's? Like, I'm hungry. Like I, It's like, I'm sorry, the, the sea foam that I just ate or like whatever, you know, the, the creme brulee shaped as like a piece of air floating in the whatever. Doesn't do it for me. But Caleb will because 
he's got those fundamentals. That's well said. Um, okay, how about Jaden Daniels? What's the food comp? Jaden Daniels for me just feels like a really, really good burger. You know okay. what you're getting, but the ceiling and the ceiling is limited, but the floor is also very high. And I think that's what Jaden Daniels is. If you surround him with the right talent, he's going to be successful in the NFL, especially on a rookie contract. Look at what he was at LSU. If you put the right receivers around him, they can have the best offense in the country. He can be the best quarterback in the country. But I still think that compared to the other guys, the ceiling is just a little bit lower than a Drake May or a Caleb Williams is going to give you. How long is the, the longest time that you would wait in that Al-Shabal line? In West so the, I don't wait in the line. I think that I put my name in it. I would always go to the Haymarket across the street. Of course. There are enough bars around there, either Lone, Mark, <laughs> Lone Wolf, Haymarket. Yeah. Just go sit and drink while you wait for that burger. What is There's the no longest you have around. waited for an Al-Shabal burger? Probably like two hours, <laughs> I would so assume. stupid. You just make an afternoon out of it, that's though. That's true. You, you just to. go hang with the buddy that you're going to eat with. Just make your day in the West Loop. It's, the, that's a fun way to spend some time. That is the move, and that is the burger in Chicago. Okay, how about Drake May? What is Drake May's food comp? Do you like uni? No. I've never so had it. I shouldn't say that. So uni is like sea urchin, yes. right? And some people no, love you. it. Some people think it's like the height of delicacy. Some people hate it. The texture is just not for them. They don't enjoy the experience. Uh -huh. That's what Drake May feels like. There are so many people <laughs> that I know that evaluate quarterbacks and they see Drake May and like, that guy's got it. Whatever it is that makes special quarterbacks, the aggressiveness, the movement, the talent, he's got it. And there are some people who watch Drake May like, I just don't see it at all. I can't believe that we're mocking this guy in the top three. So the most divisive quarterback for me deserves the most divisive food. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to say that's... No, not for Have you ever had it? Are you into it? I don't like it because texturally it's just not for me, but I understand why other people do. And yeah. that's how I feel about Drake May. It's like Even though I do or like Drake blue, May. Or blue, tree, blue cheese. He's the most polarizing prospect. Where do you think he goes before you go? In the top three somewhere. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Washington looked at Jaden Daniels and say, we just want to hit the double. We just want to make sure we're getting a guy in here who's going to raise the floor of our team. But I have a hard time imagining that either the Patriots or some yeah. other team that's coming up isn't going to take Drake May in the top three. This is a great draft. I really don't know what's going to happen. And it's so loaded with talent. And it's going to just change the complexion of so many teams uh, in the race to get back to goodness, greatness, or at least, you know, better than where Chicago was last year. Um, Robert Mays, we love you. Nobody talks about uni and burgers like you do. And we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Anytime. You're the best. Love talking to you. Uh, we have Dwight Freeney on the show, guys. Go check out the Athletic Football Show with Robert Mays. Always dropping knowledge. He's in the thick of it. And we've got Dwight Freeney, who probably ate rookie quarterbacks like Joe Milton, who we have on the show, for breakfast. So well done. That was perfect. Um, one second, look at it. I think the only thing we didn't get to was the Broncos, but that's fine. Okay. Um, Yes, yeah, so we're going to take this off. Are we taking this off of? We can't put up the slate and do what we're doing, like over the slate, kind of. But we're on air. Oh, okay. We're not. I was. We could. You don't think we could do it now? Okay, sounds good. Um, I, I mean, I don't have that in my my break, my, my block. Um, but so guys, here's what I did. And thank you guys for hanging out with me on my live chat. Hamilton's on vacation this week, everybody. Um, hello, hello, Lisa's directing. Look at these beautiful cinematic shots that she's got going on. Cannot wait to talk to Dwight Freeney. Cannot wait to meet Joe Milton. If you guys have Milton questions, let me know. When I was younger, I thought checkers was the best thing in the world. Absolutely. You know what's so funny? I haven't had McDonald's. I'm not joking, in probably two decades. Like 20 years I haven't had McDonald's. But um, for some reason this weekend, I was craving a fountain soda. So I went and got myself a fountain doctor, doc, Diet Dr. Pepper, which I also don't think I've had in 20 years. And I 
lar got a large and full and loved it. So I actually had McDonald's in a weird way this weekend, strangely enough. Joe Milton is more like Trey Lance Raw. I understand the developmental part of it, but I don't know. I still think like the tools are there, which gives him the highest ceiling, which you put him in the right position. The Giants! <coughs> Joe Milton to the Giants. That's what I want to happen. Um, five Guys Burgers. I can't get into the Five Guys because I can't get over like what the bag looks like when you leave the Five Guys and the grease. I just can't quite get over that. Um, I thought Dip and Dots was the best. What a, what a treat Dip and Dots was. Okay, we're gonna do. I do want to tell you guys. I got. I texted the marketing team at FanDuel and I asked them about yesterday's. Just like what happened in the game last night as far as sportsbook, and I have some fun little facts for you guys. Um, that I'll get you guys after this. I'm not a soda drinker. I don't know what came over me. I just really was craving. <clears throat> okay, we're back on in a minute. Dwight Freeney, his patented spin move. Good night. This is going down. Joining us now is a three-time All-Pro, seven-time Pro Bowler. He played 16 NFL seasons, 16 with 11, 11 of those with the Indianapolis Colts. One of the absolute best pass rushers with the, one of the best moves finishing with. I mean, it says here, oh, Dwight, it says 125.5 sacks, but you don't like that number. Yeah, I'm not a half guy. I'm not a half guy. That's not a, there's no such thing as a, I mean, yes, there's a such thing as a half a sack, but just because someone happened to hit him at the same time. What should it be? What should the number, you're a Hall of Famer now. You tell me what that number should be. I don't even think it matters anymore. I like, but I do like whole numbers. I like whole numbers. So oh, whatever wait, that's going to be, not a half. Dwight, don't you think, money. I'm sure a couple of those halves helped you get to 125.5 though, right? Too many halves. I need holes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, the, the sacks are half full here uh, on the Up and Adam show. So happy to have you. And I'm smiling. You're smiling. Congratulations. Congratulations on the well-deserved honor of making the Hall of Fame. Last time we spoke, you were just announced as a finalist. You said, you know, you were very like, no, 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 no. I'm going to put the blinders on. Whatever happens, happens, <laughs> yeah. whatever. What is yeah. the emotion you felt when you finally found out? I mean, it's absolutely nuts. And and the thing is, no matter how you try to prepare yourself mentally, whereas though, oh, you know, when it happens, you know, I'm, I'm going to act cool. I'm going to, you know, this, that. It doesn't matter. You, that All that goes to the wayside. Just forget about all of that. You are flooded with emotion um, and what you feel in that moment. I had a good conversation with Peyton after the fact and he said the moment that he found out that he was in the hall of fame happened to be his most memorable moment wow. about the whole entire process um and that includes going on the stage and speaking and, and all the other things that is going to happen for me later and i can understand that i mean time truly stood still in that mm. moment when I opened that door and I saw Coach Dungy sitting there, I'm like, first of all, what are you doing? <laughs> what's, that, what's happening right now? And, and for him to say what he said, you know, welcome to the Pro, Pro Football Hall of Fame. Um, you know, I have a permanent smile on my face ever since. I have goosebumps. I don't I mean, I have nothing to do with these 125 sacks, but I'm so happy for you. I cannot imagine. Who's the first person you called? First person I called was my parents. Mm. You know, my mother, and my father. Obviously, they you know were part of this journey from the beginning. You know, yeah. I wouldn't be here right without your parents. So, so for me, um, that was the first call, and obviously they were you know over the moon, couldn't believe it, so excited. You know, what a it's just is one of those moments that you know just means a lot to me, yeah. but it also means a lot to everyone who helped me get there. You know, this is a celebration for everybody. Devin Hester told me that he's very involved in the process of what his bust is going to look like. How involved oh, are, yeah. how involved and nervous are you? Oh my goodness. It's so hilarious because I'm thinking, okay, what am I gonna do? Mean, serious face yeah. or smile? I mean, it's only two things you think, right? So I go, we do a visit, we go to the Hall of Fame, and I and I look at all of the busts. Okay. And I have never been more confused. <laughs> 
<laughs> in my life. There are so many expressions that people have on their face that you're just thinking, should I do that one? Who's do you like? Should I do this Who do you one? like? There, listen, there's too many. There's too many. All the Hall of Famers that are there, you're sitting there looking at their bus, and I'm sitting there like, man, you know, Peyton, that was a good one. You know, thought provoking, not too big of a smile. <laughs> you know, you're, he looks like he's thinking about something. And then you got other guys look like they're about to kill somebody. And then you got the one with a huge smile. I'm like, oh, that's too much of a smile. I have no idea. What did you go with? Well, I went with my wife. I went there. We went there and we, we kind of just looked at everything and just kind of, you know, took it all in. And it was just, I just, I swear, I walked into that room knowing what I was going to do. And I walked out absolutely confused. So now I'm going to look through all the pictures that I've ever right. taken in my life, sit there and say, okay, what is my expression going to be like on you know, my bus. I have no idea. This is my you favorite. Tell me, this is my favorite. What do you want me to be? I, no, no. This is I, serious. Serious or smile? Come on, serious or smile? I Which think one? serious because you're so. You know, you weren't like a. I don't know. You were a monster. No offense, but you you ripped wow. quarterbacks apart. Like, don't you want those quarterbacks wow. to walk through those halls and be like, they don't want to see your smiling ass sitting there in that bronze set. They want you to know be, what? you want to look a little little badass. Mm, I think. I like that. Okay. I, I don't okay, know. But I just I'm serious. Dwight. I'm fascinated like by this. I'm fascinated by how much thought goes into. I and I. It, it's a very human thing to be like this lasts yeah. forever. What is, yeah. what do I want this to say about me? Uh, and we can't wait to see it. Yeah, that's the thing. This thing is never going anywhere. So when I'm long and gone and forgotten in a way, this bust will be there for yeah. years, a hundred years, hopefully, however long they keep doing this. Yeah. And uh, this gotta, is the last expression people are going to be seeing on my face. You got to call Ed Reed. Call Ed Reed. I think that's the most iconic one and say... Yeah. What what was your process? What did you think? I guess, but he had that one sort of look to him. So it's a hard, it's yeah. a hard thing. It's but you hard. Know what? He, had was... the, he had the hair, he had the beard. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> okay, know while, while we're celebrating, I thought we could just have a little fun here. So many sacks. We're gonna say we're gonna have say 125 plus, 125 plus sacks oh, for Hall of Thank Famer you. Dwight Freeney. Do you know which quarterback was your first victim? I have no clue. You, how do you Absolutely. not know? I don't. I mean, that was, you know how long ago that was? <laughs> was 16. Well, not now. It's been even longer than that. 20 something later. Is this it? Talk me through it. This is you on David Carr, baby. Colts, Texas, oh, 2002. Oh, David. Oh, poor David. Well, look. I do remember sacking David a lot of times. I think actually David <laughs> might be the most sacked quarterback that I've ever sacked in my entire career. Um, so there's a lot of sacks with David that is just kind of all just one big conglomerate of sacks. But, <laughs> you know, it's David, you know, bless his heart, he didn't have much of a chance at that point. He didn't have a great, great offensive line. And he didn't have that many weapons, so it was kind of tough on him, and I was pretty tough on him, so I apologize. That David. was your first Sorry. one. That was your first victim. You think David Carr wants to roll up to camp with the family, walk through those things, and see you're smiling? This is the guy who stopped yeah, me more well, than anybody? No, he wants to see. Look how scary that guy looks. See? <laughs> but I don't want to scare him anymore. How many times do I have to scare the guy? I keep getting these sacks. Oh my my, God. It might be good to walk in and see a smile. He might feel like you know, brings the defenses down. You know say, what, oh, okay, Dwight, it. you know what you have to do you better be thanking him in that canton speech hey, thank you for how 12 13 sacks Listen, out of my 125 plus shout out david carr appreciate you wherever you might be on this <laughs> saturday afternoon okay what was your do you remember your final victim your final sack 2017 oh stop it 2017 you're with the seahawks week oh, 17 give me a guess seahawks. Open your eyes. Uh, I'm trying to. I'm trying to visualize. Oh, that's why you said open my eyes. Oh, look, Kurt. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. That was a good one. That was when you know, towards the end, you don't know how many years you have left or how many plays you got left. So I thank God, you know, Seattle picked me up and I had an opportunity to go after Kurt. I love the fact that he held on to that ball too. It was great. 
It's a Hall of Fame career. It's amazing. You just talked about how important it was that Tony Dungy surprised you with the news. You opened the door. You're like, what is going yeah. on? Uh, and I bet that's yeah. super, super special. Um, but he wasn't the only Hall of Famer at the golf club that day, I understand. <laughs> yeah. So I'm a member at the Grove, and the Grove is Michael Jordan's golf course. I've oh, known casual. Michael for, ye for years. I've known him from 2003 through the game of golf. And, what is happening? Um, yeah, the, that's that's my big bro. That's my big brother. And uh, we play a lot of golf together. And he's been through the ups and downs of my football career and my golf career now, <laughs> right? So this is great for him to be there, obviously, him being his course. He actually is the one who set me up. You know, look, the rules for his course is pretty pretty simple. Look, just show up. Okay. Wear a T-shirt and shorts, whatever you want. There's no rules. A lot of golf courses have all these rules. Tuck in your shirt. You have to wear a button-up. Yeah. Not this type of shorts. No music. No. His course is really relaxed. Okay. Just show up. Just don't be a jerk, all right? If a guy wants to come play through you, let him through. That's all, the only rule it really is in his course. Okay. So for me, I was like, okay, just wear T-shirts and shorts every day. So that's what it's been. Now, this particular day... He said, hey, look, I have a photo shoot like him for the Grove, and he wants me to be a part of the photo oh shoot. Gosh. So he wanted me to dress up nice. He said, hey, wear some good golf clothes. Like, You're wearing the same like, shirt. And then, listen, it's I put your the lucky same shirt. shirt on. Didn't even, this is my lucky shirt. You know what I mean? I got the announcement for Football, football Hall yeah. of Fame. I'm talking to you. So there you go. There you go. Um, I love so it. yeah, I throw I throw on the shirt, throw on some shorts, make it look good, and I open the door. Coach Dungey's there, and he's laughing in the background. It was awesome. Um, w did he let you? Did he take it easy on you that day? Did y'all golf after? Like, oh my goodness! I mean, look. Well, the good thing is, and bad thing is, he used my partner, <laughs> and he's mo he's majority he's my partner for the most <laughs> most rounds that we play. Right. Um, the bad thing is. I had no chance of hitting any good shots that entire day. 100%. Right? I, it, it didn't even matter. I didn't care. I hit the ball in the water. Oh, who cares? Whatever. Did I'm he a care? Football, I feel like Michael player. cared. I, you know what? He probably did. He hit it well. Most most times he shows, he has this expression on his face where he just looks at me like, you know, what, 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 what's going on? What are you doing? But today I got no expression. I mean, that day I got no expression. It was just all good, all love. Dwight, I have seen Michael Jordan and I have avoided him every time. I don't want to meet him. I'm t I mean, I grew up in Chicago. Like, I mean, he's, oh, really? he is on such awesome. like a level that like, I've been in situations, do you want to go meet Michael Jordan? No, I don't want to meet him. <laughs> you should um, meet him, he's a what, great guy. What is the key to being like the best golf partner uh, like if you were to if I if like if I was in a, a foursome or whatever you call it whatever the, whatever that that is uh, golfing yeah. and it was you know you're gonna golf with Michael Jordan what would be your piece of advice for me? Play fast. <laughs> Play fast. fast. Okay. It doesn't matter what you do. If you mess up, mess up fast. Don't take forever. The golf round already takes long enough as it is. He always gives me crap about how long I take to putt the ball, <laughs> etc. Even though I think that I'm pretty quick for stand for most standard people, but he just likes to get the round over with. So he's just like, regardless of what it is, just play fast. You can mess up, play fast. That's oh my gosh! Well, we got the draft coming up. Let's talk a little football here. We talked a little Hall of oh. Fame, a little golf, a little MJ, a little fashion. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. And okay. listen, we got the draft coming up. Listen, your former teammate Marvin Harrison the son yeah. of this great player is largely yeah. projected to be the first wide receiver taken. There's a big gap between him and all of the other really talented guys at the whiteout spot. Do you have any memories of like a, a baby Marvin Harrison Jr.? Oh man, it's crazy. I can't even believe I'm about to see Marvin Jr. <laughs> you know, be drafted. That tells you how old I am, I guess. It's, it's, it's crazy. Um, and I'm so honored and to be a part of that whole family of Marvin and Marvin Jr., ex Colts. You know, um, I'm excited. You know, he, Marvin used to bring him out from time to time um, during practice and obviously some of the big games. And uh, seeing Marvin Jr. out there doing what he's doing, uh, there's no surprise, though, crazy enough that he's always going to be a great wide receiver and that had to do with Marvin mm. Marvin senior how Marvin is you know Marvin perfected his craft and how he went about his business out in 
on the football field. One of the best, greatest receivers that ever played the game. Probably the best route runner, I think, that ever played the game. Mm -hmm. And uh, so to see Marvin Jr. kind of following his father's footsteps a little bit is awesome. Everyone's saying on our on our YouTube page, slow golf is annoying. He's correct. Great advice. Great, great <laughs> advice. Um, Just play fast. Just play yeah. fast. From one of the goats. Okay, so I can't wait to see where Marvin Harrison goes. I wonder, is uh, is, is is Marvin Harrison the kind of guy who's, is he texting him during the game? So, you know, Harrison Jr. sees his phone and his dad's giving it, like, is he sitting him down for film sessions? How involved is he? That must That could be a lot. Well, I think he's probably involved to a certain extent. Um, he's definitely involved. Now, you know, he's going to let the, the coach, his position coach, do whatever he needs to do, probably from a scheme standpoint. And, you know, Marvin line up here, line up, on, line up there. But I think from a technique standpoint of what he actually is doing, mm -hmm. how he runs his routes, how he comes in and out of those routes, um, I think that's all Marvin Sr., all Marvin. I honestly do. I see a lot of similarities. Uh, enough of this offense. Enough of this offense talk. Let's get to some defense. Aaron Donald, he retires just a couple of weeks yeah. ago. And now I'm, I'm sitting here every day like, who's, who's the guy now? Who's the most dominant defensive lineman in the NFL? He himself said the best defensive player in the league right now is T.J. Watt. Who do you think deserves okay. that title? Oh, that's a tough one. I mean, you have, I think it's out of three guys, honestly. TJ Watt being one of them, Miles Garrett and Micah Parsons. Um, I think when you see Miles Garrett and what he can do at the size that he is, is just crazy to me. And he can move from right to left side and just straight up dominate. And, you know, he can run around you. He can run through you. He has a good little inside spin move. He does different things, and he's a load. He's blocking field goals. I mean, the guy doing all types of stuff. I think he's super dominant. And I think Micah, just what Micah does, he plays the game so hard. Every single play moves around so much. You know, people don't realize how hard it is to play on another side. It seems like, okay, if you're on the right side and you can go to the left side, oh, who cares? It's, you're out there on the football field. It doesn't make a difference. It's like riding, if you're a right-handed rider, right, left-handed. Your body doesn't understand how to do the moves or do the strokes on that side. It's very similar to when you move on the other side of the football field. I, keep, I kept seeing Micah Parsons' name in the news lately. I don't think it's like anything big, but there's this report you know, by media, so take it with a grain of salt, um, that Micah Parsons is wearing thin with the Cowboys. Like his sort mm. of, have you heard anything like, no, right? It's a weird, it's a I, weird. I haven't heard anything. I, I know him and, and Dan Quinn was always close and that was the only coordinator he ever knew. Um, I don't know if that has anything to do with what you're yeah. hearing or what have you, but you know, he, wherever he goes, he's gonna, he's gonna be a dominant force. Do you know that I would never let anybody get away with picking three people so greedily when I ask them to pick one. But now that you're a Hall of Famer, yeah, well, I will okay, allow it. You. Even though we well, all know thank you. everybody thank watching you. knows the answer is Miles Garrett because it was what you spent the most time on and what you talked yeah. about the most. Listen, I had I had uh, Hitner on the show yesterday. Dante Whitner joined me, okay? And I asked him about Jim Harbaugh, who we spent lots of time with, of course, in San Francisco. Some great years, a big, quick turnaround yeah. uh, up in San Francisco. And he he went to he went to another planet. I don't know what was going on, but what in the <laughs> ayahuasca was happening. But he told me that the Chargers will be playing in the AFC Championship game this season because of Jim Harbaugh. You've spent some time with that squad, mm -hmm. that face. What are you saying? That's uh, a stretch. Look, I, I, I think that, you know, it takes a couple years most times for a new head coach to establish his, you know, whatever he's going to do, his system. You know, you have to have the players buy in. You have to get the players. Um, I don't know if they have the players yet. Um, I don't know what their system is going to be. You know, it's a lot different from the last time he was here in the NFL. And sometimes you got to get a little lucky. So it's not just all about coaching. It's a complimentary type of thing with coaching and players and the system that you're going to run. So we'll see what he's going to do. I know he loves to run the mm -hmm. ball. 
Um, so that that's going to help them. And with I who? Think, you know, with who? We got Greg Roman there. That's all Greg Roman. What are you going to have? Justin Fields running the or not Justin Fields? You're going to have Justin Herbert running the ball? What do we do? What do we like? No, no. I think Eckler's you know. Look, gone. they need to they, listen. Eckler is gone. Okay, and I and they picked up a running back um, from the Ravens. Edwards. Uh, what's his Edwards, which is really good. Um, they got Hurst to help block at, at a tight end position. I think that you have to establish some type of thing for your offense. You lose Mike Williams, you lose Keenan Allen, which are great receivers. So therefore, you're going to have to complement your defense in a certain way and put them in a certain mode, mm-hmm. which will be run the ball, okay? And that's what they're going to try to do, establish the run. When you establish the run, you keep the game closer for the most part. Right. The clock is on your side. And you always have an opportunity to win. Now, you have a great quarterback who may have to do a lot of play action uh, you know, to help, you know, relieve some of those teams that want to put eight in the box, et cetera. Um, you do have that, but you're going to have to get some down the field threat. Now, maybe that is Marvin Harrison Jr. You know, uh, oh. maybe they do go into the draft and they pick I'm some, sure. you know, some talent out there. So I think, you know, with the draft picks, with establishing the run, they have a chance to be better. Not AFC championship game. That's kind of that's a stretch. That's a stretch that's a from stretch. a Hall of Famer. Take that, Whitner. No, I, I mean I love the Chargers. I'd love to see it, but I mean coaching can't be everything. Although we did see with your squad, the Colts uh, under Steichen almost make the playoffs, nearly dismissing it, uh, and yeah. a, largely due to their coaching. I think a lot of people are sleeping on those Colts, and a lot of people are sleeping on Anthony Richardson for 2024. We have Joe Milton on the show. Uh, incredible mm. skill set. He's giving me like a, a Josh Allen sort of vibe. You can throw the ball 80 yards. Cannot wait to talk to him. Dwight, we appreciate you. Congrats on the Hall of Fame, and good luck picking the face. Oh, thank you. Can give me some of those faces as we go to break. What do you? I mean, I got the me. I got the me. I got the focus. You gotta get the wrinkles. I got the calm. I got the one. The one eye. No, we're not doing a one eye. I will not allow a one eye. There's some guys that do it. Yeah. There's some. I think Peyton might have did one eye brush. Really? No, we're not doing that. No, we're absolutely not doing that. And just shout out. Let's just, you know, David Carr, wherever you might be, as we head to break here. Just I hope we're having a great Tuesday somewhere, David. We'll be back. I love you, David. Always. (laughs) Dwight, you're the best. Talk to you soon. (laughs) <laughs> Congrats. Right, thank you. You just casually thank hang you. out with Michael Jordan. I literally couldn't speak. I couldn't hey, speak. My guy. You're he's you're my out boy. there swinging know. a golf club competitively with Michael Jordan. I would die. Hey, look, when it's when I first met him, I was dying. All right. Yeah. Now I'm dying. Yeah, now it's just, you know, Monday or whatever. What's today? Wednesday? Now it's Wednesday. Is she like smoking is. cigars out there? Like, what is? How cool is it's, he? It, it's what you would be, what you would imagine it being. It would be. It, what do you know? He's smoking cigars. He has a cigar in his mouth the entire round. <laughs> when it when when it comes down to a big big play or big putt, yeah. he has the same look in his eyes as he was trying to you yeah. know beat somebody in the finals of of you know yeah. game six. He sees whatever, Utah Jazz same. out there. He's just like, oh my God, this is so Absolutely. Without question. You know, now and promise you, magic happens on the golf course. Not as often as it did in, in basketball. But he will do some freaky stuff. Like did he just do that? It, it happens. It's kind of crazy. I, yeah. I just can't believe that you're just like, yeah, you know, I was at the golf club. It's just an insane thing that that's, that that's your life and that that's your friend. Unbelievable. Okay, I'm going to let you go because I know your, your day is full. I, I, so, I appreciate you so much. What advice, would you give, what advice would you give this rookie quarterback coming in? Oh, man. You Look, hate quarterback. <laughs> I do. You asked me to give a quarterback. Just Real tell quick. him to run for his life. Run for your life. He right? can. We're after, have we're you after seen? You. Have you seen Joe Milton run? He's running through the Dwight Freenies of the NFL right now. I'm not kidding. Have you seen him? No, no but I, I would say, yeah, he's a beast. Now he's a beast. But I'm going to say this. Yeah. Whatever, he, whatever he's doing, or whatever that new rookie quarterback it is, stay within the system and try not to do too much. Boom. All right, that's what I ask. Do not try to do too much. Yeah. Play within your system, and trust me, rely on your other weapons. It, they'll get you there. Don't put a guy like you in the Hall of Fame. Joe Milton, are you here? <laughs> Can you hear Joe? Hey, Joe. How you doing? What up, Joe? This is Hall of Famer Dwight Freeney. I'm Kay Adams. Nice Joe, to meet what you. Up, what up? What's going on? Nice he, to meet you. He, you know, but he, nothing much, man. <laughs> Listen, man, I'm looking forward to seeing you out there, man. Good luck. Most definitely. I appreciate it.
All right, Dwight, we appreciate you. You go work on your Hall of Fame bus, and we're going to work on getting Joe Milton yeah. his. Absolutely. All right, we're going to be back on the air in 20 seconds. Joe, I'm going to ask you all the tough questions. I'm so excited. This is going to be great. we got Joe Milton out of Tennessee on the show. Let's do it. Okay, I cannot wait. Michael Jordan, golfing, scoop. Uh, Dwight Freeney on the show talking about his Hall of Fame bus and everything that goes into that. Um, Robert Mays breaking down all of the ins and outs of the draft. That's like 16 days away, which I'm sure is music to the ears of my next guest because it'll all be over and he'll find out where he's going and where he's going to uh, continue his career. This is an NFL-ready prospect at the quarterback position out of the University of Kentucky. 37 total touchdowns, five interceptions in his last two years at Tennessee, a 2022 Orange Bowl MVP, uh, Jason Witten, Collegiate Man of the Year, semifinalist, and a dog dad to a, uh, I believe, a pit bull named Blitz. Is that right? That is correct. That's correct. I think I got that right. Now, 37 touchdowns in two years. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Thank you for having me. That's a pretty crazy stat line, no? Uh, I could be better. It could be better. <laughs> it couldn't be much better than that. I'm so excited to get to meet you and have NFL fans get to know you a little bit. Uh, you have all of the tools. What do we need to know about the backflips? Are we bringing the backflips <laughs> to the NFL? Let's start here. Talk, talk uh, to the me. The backflips. The backflips is going to be with me forever. Um, I feel like I'll be doing that for the rest of my life. What? When do they? Do you, do you decide you're going to do them? I saw one at your pro day. Then you. I mean, come on. Uh, it depends. Um, I just like making ever, making everybody else happy. Uh, I feel like every time I do it, it's kind of shocking to everybody else. So, just do it. Joe, I feel like some. I feel like sometimes you do it and you don't even look behind you. And I'm trying to imagine like you being out there. You throw an 80 yard bomb for a touchdown. I don't know. Maybe you to Jalen Hyatt. And I can't see Dable just being like, "Yeah, go ahead, backflip." I don't know if they're gonna let you backflip like that. I don't think so. Um, but probably when I get my first touchdown, I might do it. Yeah. You never know. I always say ask for forgiveness and not for permission, which I think you'll definitely do. Um, and, you know, everybody's talking about your arm. It's incredible, of course. You registered the hardest thrown pass at the combine at 62 miles per hour. You destroyed an orange. We all know about that. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so curious, Joe. How much pride do you take in your arm? Um... I have a lot of confidence in my arm. Um, every time I throw the ball, I know I know for sure deep down inside I make that throw. Um, even if I miss, um, I know for sure that the next one I complete. Um, but at the same time, it's just the finesse that my arm talent that I have. Uh, you know, just being able to make every throw um, and all the hard ones make make them look easy, and then all the easy ones make them look uh, more easy than they are. When it's all anybody talks about. It's good and bad, right? Because it puts you on the map. People fall in love with it. Coaches, scouts, it's like, I got to see that arm. I, I know this game. I know what these guys are obsessed with. It's just how in men work, too. They're just like, oh, they're crazy. And it, it puts you on the map. But it's also, it's also got to be like, no, 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 there's more to me. Don't just talk about that. What is your relationship with the celebrity that is your arm? Do you like it or not uh, like it? Like you said, it's kind of good and bad. Mm -hmm. um, like, I wasn't the person that said, oh, my arm is just so strong. Hey, look at my arm. Um, I just threw the ball, and everybody get amazed about it. Uh, but I feel like it's just another person throwing the football. Um, you know, the other guys in the draft, you know, they do the same thing. They can throw the ball far. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, they don't talk about how far the other guys throw the ball. They talk about all the finesse and the touch that the other guys have. You know, uh, what about Joe? Um, you know, uh, I made plays where uh, it was finesse. Everybody talk about how hard I throw the ball, too. Um, to them, it looks hard, but to me, it's just coming off my hand. Um, you know, it's just a flick of a wrist, but, no, it is what it is. Yeah, I don't want people to lose the other amazing stuff. My favorite thing that you do, and you heard me talking to Dwight Freeney about it, it's when you, st when you start running, you finish runs so meanly. You're so... <laughs> What you're terrifying. You're a goal line weapon. That's fine, but you run, you finish your runs bulldozing people. What are you thinking when you're doing that? Uh, it depends. Usually they talk a lot of trash to me before, um, and I'm the oldest of seven, and that's all my siblings did my whole life. Uh, usually just talk trash to me uh, when we start playing and competing around the house. So I just took that same anger and I just took it out on them. 
So your advice to defenders, because I honestly think you're terrifying for defenders. They've got to be like, not this again. I don't want any of this. <laughs> On the NFL level, college level, whatever, the, the advice you would give is don't talk to me because it will wind me up. Uh, I feel like they're going to do it now just because I heard they heard me say it. <laughs> um, but the linebackers, they could talk. I ain't worried about it. But them DBs and safeties, man, y'all better relax. I would be terrified to see you as a defender. I would absolutely just uh, freak out because it's insane. Uh, in the open field, no thank you. I'd run the other way. Um, seven goal line touchdowns. Uh, it's a part of your game. The best quarterbacks in, in my game on the NFL level, Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow's got it, Josh Allen's got it. Being mobile is, is a part of the best uh, skill set of every quarterback in our game right now. What you do does remind me a little bit of Josh Allen. When you see those comparisons, what do you think? And I'm talking about obviously the arm, the arm strength, what you can do, but also that mobility that is a beautiful part of your game. Yeah, um, I feel like, you know, he plays a great game. Um, he's also smart. Um, and also, he's a big human as well. Um, but just the way that he maneuvers and deciphers defenses, um, you know, you just pretty much all I can do is just praise him. Um, and also, we have the same quarterback coach through our draft process. Oh. so. Being able to know, just talk to uh, Jordan Palmer about Josh Allen and how he operates and what type of person he was. You know, just understanding that he's also just country strong um, mm. and just being massive. You know, just you know, it's it's different. Um, also, you know, um, Jordan being able to you know talk to me, uh, just how he talked to Josh Allen. Um, it's just a process where you just have to appreciate. Tough ass running monster arm. I see the same thing. I know Jordan Palmer, incredible team you have there, uh, and that's very exciting. Now you do, you might like Josh Allen, but you want to take him on in, in racing. Do you remember sending this tweet back in 2019? We dig up old tweets here. 2019, Josh <laughs> Allen challenged Mahomes to see who could throw the football further. You tweeted, sign me up, I want in. Are you still talking that talk? Oh, most definitely. That you goes to anybody. You can outthrow anybody. I, I think you're probably right. Yeah, most definitely. You have everything it takes, Joe. Size, arm strength, run game, skill set, tools. But you did only have one full year as a starter. What is mm -hmm. the thing, the specific thing, that you're really working on to bring your game to the next level? Uh, just being more poised in the pocket, um, understanding what's going on uh, with my body. Uh, you know, a lot of guys, you know, when they miss a pass, you know, you got a lot of QB coaches that says, oh, it's your wrist, you know, uh, flick your wrist a little bit more or drive through it a little bit more. But they're not actually talking about your body posture and how your body actually works. Um, so for me, um, I understand that my lower body is the trigger and then my, my arm is just the barrel. Mm -hmm. So therefore, when I get into my uh, my drop and I get into my pass, my pre-pass position, therefore, I'm able to sink into my hips and actually get a better uh, drive into going forward, not up. So in college, I was very trap heavy, um, using more arm than I needed to. So therefore, when I got to working with Jordan Palmer, I did a biometrics and mm -hmm. I understand my lower body now. So being able to activate my right glute and my throwing um, and also just sinking and collecting, um, being able to understand every step I take, I got to go somewhere, um, not just taking false movements and, you know, just being able to drive instead of shooting up so that every ball I make, I can be in control of it. Wow, I asked for a specific answer and I got one. <laughs> that is incredible. And I, can't, I just cannot wait to see where you, I want, I mean, I'll be honest, I want you to go to the Giants. I want you with Jalen. <laughs> I want, I want, you know, you're, you're working with Jordan Palmer. It only makes sense that you get Dable, who got the best out of Josh Allen and took him to the next level. You, I think, mm -hmm. have the highest ceiling of any of these draft prospects. I would just love for you to go to there, that system. Would you, would you like New York? We we'll never know. I do like New York. Okay. I've been there once. Okay. Um, the pizza was all right, but we'll talk about the <laughs> Okay, foodies. that's good. The, the, the pizza's all right. Okay, well, I'll have to uh, show you the, the right spots <laughs> to go. You went to visit the Browns recently. Did I you did. like Cleveland? What was that visit like? What set that visit apart from the other ones that you've had? Um, well, I only had that visit so far. Okay. And that visit was pretty nice. Everybody on the coaching staff was great. Um, head coach Kevin was great. Um, and then, you know, just pretty much like a culture here at Tennessee that I created here, um, me and Hendon, uh, just far as like, you know, just get your work done. Um, you be who you say you are and then just, you know, show up and show out. Um, other than that, work hard and then you're going to have fun while doing it. 
What do you mean by I created the culture at Tennessee? You have, an, a very fa you have a fascinating career, right? Three years at Michigan, you graduate with a bachelor's in American culture, then you still had three years of eligibility as a grad transfer at Tennessee. Uh, you, tw I think it was 2022, Hendon Hooker, ACL, you go in, take over, and you end up being the Orange Bowl MVP. What do you mean by I made the culture at Tennessee? Yeah, um, just the way that Coach Hype, you know, taught us in this building, you know, be who you say you are, but also just do what you say you're going to do. Um, and not only just say it, just go do it. Um, and also how you, how you go, how you do everything is how you, how you do a little, how you do something is how you do everything. So basically like, you know, what you do at home. So here at Tennessee, you get at least five hours off. Mm. Um, we do everything in the morning. So what you do throughout those five hours is, you know, who's going to, who you are, you're going to be on game day. So me and Hendon, we took our time and, you know, took care of our body, but also just getting the receivers right, understanding the O-line pass protections, the run game blocks, and who they're going to during that, during that week. And also just, you know, doing the self-care, um, you know, all the small things you can do before you go back in the facility. And then um, we just had a set schedule, and that just made a lot of guys follow who we are. And we always stay true to ourselves uh, no matter what, um, even in hard times. Uh, even if something bad happened in the game, we had a four-second count where you walk off by yourself and you cut yourself out for four mm. seconds, and then you come back and none of that ever, nothing that happened in the past never mattered no more. So um, everybody started catching on to that, and that's why we started wearing these wristbands. Is you know be be where you at right now and mm -hmm. just breathe. Um, you know all the small things in that game. You know small things gonna change the whole game, but at the same time, you know. It's about what you do the next play. Um, the last play doesn't matter no more. I knew NF an NFL team, a lucky NFL team, was going to get a guy with a hell of an arm. Everybody knows that. He'll throw fruit yeah. 110 yards, whatever. He'll do a backflip. He's going to get uh, somebody with a, a high ceiling, amazing tools. Uh, but an NFL team is getting a culture maker as well. And that's what, what I learned that in this interview. And I think that's really important. And I'm glad we got there. We are finishing our show. Joe Milton coming to an NFL team near you. Not the Jets, the Giants. That's me saying it. That's what I want to happen. <laughs> but wherever you go, you're going to be a stud. We're so uh, grateful for your time and good luck. Thank you so much. Enjoy it. Go eat those Dwight Freenies for breakfast. <laughs> See ya. See you. All right. We'll be back tomorrow, guys. Right here.